As we wrap up 2022, I wanna share some of my favorite products I've come across with you, including what I'm deeming the hardtail of the year. <music> 2022 was a good year and I've had lots of cool products to test. I've been mountain biking for over 25 years and I've been through tons of different gear. And through all my years of riding different stuff and trying different stuff, some pieces of gear really stand out as extra special. This video is not sponsored by anybody. I'm not getting paid to promote any of these products. These are the products that I use and love every single day. Some of them I paid full price for, some of them I got at a discount, and some of them were given to me to test out to see how I would like them. But in no way is anybody paying me to promote these products. Now, if you want to purchase these products, I have deals with a couple vendors. And if you purchase through my links, it helps support the channel. So I'll have links to everything below, but know that nobody's paying me to promote their product here. These are products that I love and use and recommend to you guys. All right, let's get started. First up is my Milwaukee Compact Inflator. I use this thing every single day. It's a digital compressor. It's battery operated so I can take it anywhere. I take this on every trip. It's always in the car. And before we start, I double check with everybody. Everybody's tires good. And sure enough, someone's like, oh, I need a few PSI. We pop this out set the desired pressure, start it, and it stops when it reaches that pressure. Really great way to have consistent pressure in your tires. It's really fast, and I use it for seating tubeless tires as well. This thing is indispensable. If it died, I would buy two more today. Bike Hardcore makes my favorite bike cleaners, degreasers, uh, bike washes. They are biodegradable, which is really nice. A lot of companies are using some really harsh chemicals that you don't wanna dump down the drain or put outside. Everything Bike Hardcore does is biodegradable. They also sell it in concentrated solutions. That helps because we're not shipping big containers of water around. Everybody's got water. So I put a little bit of this in here, add water, and I've got a solution ready to go. This is the whip wipe. You just spray it on and wipe it off for a really quick cleanup of your bike. Not a lot of people know about them. They're a small company trying to get off the ground. And for the things they're doing, I'm actually really blown away and I hope to see them blow up because their stuff is wonderful. Also, everything's got a wonderfully fresh scent. Next up are bird spokes. Now this is a wheel set by Atomic that uses bird spokes. I'm a big fan of Atomic stuff. But these bird spokes are, yes, the most expensive spoke on the planet. But I think spokes, especially bird spokes, are one of the best places to spend money, especially on a hardtail. They are lighter than steel, they are stronger than steel in tensile strength, and they create such a smooth, buttery ride feel. Now, no wheel set is gonna make a hardtail feel like a full suspension. So when I say smooth, buttery ride feel, I'm not talking about like, oh my goodness, I just ran into that six inch size, you know, boulder and I didn't even feel it. You're not gonna do that. But it does make stiff wheels ride better and it makes compliant wheels ride even more compliant. I partnered with them in videos in the past, but they are not affiliated with this video and they're not paying me to say this. I truly, truly love their products. If I had the budget, every single one of my wheels would have bird spokes on them. Next up is five dev cranks. I have chosen to partner with these guys because I love the look, I love that they're made in the US, and I love the quality, and even more, I like the ride feel. They take out vibrations. I did a video a while back where I compared these to my E-wings, and the E-wings were noticeably stiffer. Now, if you're sprinting or racing BMX or need a super, super stiff crank, those E-wings are gonna be better. I had the E-Wings installed on my spot rocker, but the more I rode that, the harsher it was, and I just felt beat up after every ride. I thought, there's no way it's just the crank. So I swapped these out in an experimental video, and it instantly took away that harsh feeling that was going to my legs. So I'm a huge fan of 5Dev, and I gotta give them a huge props from coming out of nowhere. Granted, I say nowhere. They've been making you know medical and space industry stuff for years, but they just came out as a mountain bike company and they came out swinging hard and you're seeing these everywhere now. I've got a discount code to these below. These are my favorite cranks. I think they're beautiful. They have lots of cool color options, lots of different length options. They have a really small overlap here so you're not getting as many pedal strikes as many other cranks. After using their cranks, I fell in love and became a partner with them. So we do partner together on a lot of videos. This is not one of them. I'm not paid to promote these. I just think they're fantastic. All right, this is no surprise. These are the Paul Clampers. These are my favorite disc brakes. They're cable actuated, no fluid in them, no bleeding them. They're very simple and they're gonna be going strong in 30 years. 
I use the short pull with the Canty lever. Heavy, expensive, and wonderful. There are two ways you can support Hardtail Party to help this channel be profitable in the future. Number one, you can use the links in my videos. Anytime you shop at Jensen, anytime you shop at Competitive Cyclist, anytime you shop at Worldwide Cyclery, use the links in my video. Just click that link first to their homepage and then every purchase you make after that, a tiny, tiny portion of it will go to support Hardtail Party. That helps a ton. Number two, the other thing you can do is become a patron. Even just five bucks a month goes a long way to supporting this channel and I'm super grateful for my patrons. Up next are these Nipex pliers. Every single pro mechanic has these and there's a great reason. They're super strong, they're built like a tank, they're expensive and they will outlast you. They look like channel locks, but they're parallel pliers. So these jaws stay parallel no matter what you do. And so they can actually be used as a wrench. Anyway, Nipex makes really good stuff and the price reflects it. They're not cheap, but they're wonderful. This is the battery to my favorite derailleur, my SRAM Axis Eagle derailleur. I'm just using the GX Eagle one. I've got a whole video about this. I've fallen in love with it. It's especially helpful for me where I'm swapping derailleurs from bike to bike to bike to bike every week. And it's saved me a ton of time having to run cables and shorten cables. It isn't a necessity in the slightest, but after you use it for a while, you miss it when you don't have it. And I didn't think I'd be missing it that much. I like mechanical things. I don't like electronic things but I really like Axis Eagle. Next up is rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle. I think I got this at Walgreens and I just keep topping it off. This is a game changer. Use it all the time for cleaning brakes, cleaning frames, cleaning anything. Get yourself some rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle. My all time favorite fork is the Cane Creek Helm Mark II. I'm not affiliated with them. I'm not paid to run their products. I just really love them. Easy to adjust travel in them. They're heavy though. They weigh between a Fox 36 and a 38, but I just love the performance. You can adjust the positive and negative air chamber separately so you can choose just how buttery it is off the top. I've been trying to get one of the limited edition pink ones. I hope to be able to get one of those one day. Anyway, these are adjustable from 120 all the way up to 160 mil travel. I don't maintain them nearly as well as I should and they're flawless. Really, really great forks. This is the Aero Spider Rack. This is a bike rack for bike packing. Absolutely love this thing. Couldn't be happier with it. A little bit heavy. I think the price is perfect though. It fits on so many bikes and it allows me to keep using my dropper. I'm so short that I can't use a dropper on most bikes and a saddlebag because the saddlebag will go into the tire. I think this is the best way to get started into bike packing without worrying too much about special proprietary bags and proprietary gear. Get this, a couple volet straps, strap your tent on here, your sleeping bag on here, go have an adventure out in the woods. This year I got a chance to test some of these King Titanium side loader cages. Totally not worth the money. They're the wrong shape, they don't work great. What does work great are these specialized side loader cages. I just use the plastic ones. These aren't sexy, you can get them at any specialized dealer, but they are wonderful. You slip the bottle in from the side and tip it up and it hangs on for dear life. Now, if you wanna get them on a fork, or run one on a seat tube and one on the down tube. Pay attention to whether it's right entry or left entry. But man, I don't feel the need for the carbon ones because the plastic ones are so good. Had this for over five years, not a single problem with it. My favorite grips are the Ergon GD1s. These are developed for their downhill teams. I don't care, I'm not a downhill racer. I love these on everything, I ride them everywhere. For bike packing, I do like a slightly more padded cushiony grip where I'm doing like three or four days in a row on the same thing. But for trail riding and rides under one day, I absolutely love these. They allow me to loosen my grip on the bars, not in an unsafe manner, but just relax and not death grip them, but still have all of the grip that I need. And like all things Ergon, they have great indexing marks and they're lock on, super easy to use. I've got a link to these in the description as well. My favorite chain ring is an absolute black oval chain ring. No issues with them, I've got thousands of miles on these. Some people can really feel the difference with ovals and some people can't. I really like them, I feel like it smooths out my cadence. I do a lot of chopping wood, so a lot of hard uh, pedals, which is not good, that's a bad technique. So if I had better, smoother, rounder technique, maybe a round would work better for me, but I use these on my bikes and I notice myself cleaning up sections that I don't normally clean up. The right tire for your terrain and grip requirements is probably the biggest difference you can make to a bike, yet most people don't experiment. Most people are running acid guys and DHRs or DHRs and DHFs. Those are great tires for gravity and really high speeds, but a lot of people buy a hardtail, 
put light parts on it and then put these super draggy, super grippy tires on and just say, man, it's so slow. It just doesn't have that pep and zip I thought it would. This has become my go-to rear tire. It's light, it's fast rolling. I don't think I've ever pinch flatted one. That's not to say they can't be pinch flatted and I ride pretty gingerly on my back wheel, but this is the specialized ground control grid. I run it in a 29 by 23 on most of my bikes or 29 by 26 when I'm running 2.6 big tires on big rims. They roll fast, they grip really well, and they climb really well. This is an angle set by Works Components. They're out of the UK. They make my favorite angle adjusting headsets. This is for standard press in headsets. If you have integrated headsets, you need to use something like the 9.8 Slacker. That's the only option I know of for integrated headsets. If you don't know what integrated or press in cups mean, you're probably not ready for this mod yet and you need to talk to someone who does. But if you wanna change your bike's geometry for 100 to $150, Works Components is my favorite brand to do that. My favorite hub is the Onyx Classic. It's a little heavier than the Vesper, a little bit stronger. Uh, the clutch is a little bit bigger in them, but I'll take either one. They're completely silent. Zero, click, 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 but they have true instant engagement and a nice soft engagement. I would run Onyx on every single one of my wheel sets if I could afford it. Another one of those products that's a little bit heavier, but once you go Onyx, it's really hard to go back to anything else. This is my most used tool, my park tool repair stand. I love these old school ones with the lever. You have to be smart and know what you're doing, but that's kind of the case of all things mechanics. Just adjust the, the jaw tension here and away you go. I don't like the push button ones. I don't like the ones with the little wheel. I don't like the ones with the lever. This is what I like. Maybe it's because this is what I used in the 90s when I worked at a shop. Maybe it's just because it works so dang well. And I get the bench mount ones, so you could just bolt them. I built this whole stand. I just bolted it to a piece of conduit from Home Depot. And if you're not handy and you want to buy just the whole thing, you can buy the whole thing, but it's significantly more expensive. If you're a little bit handy, you could mount this to a wall. You could mount it to a workbench, mount it to a pipe like this. I've got different holes so I can change the height, but really this is the height I keep it at all the time. Nothing else comes close and I've used quite a few other bike stands. Another product that's changed my life that I don't have in front of me, it's on, installed on one of my bikes, is the MacRide child seat. That thing allows me to ride with my daughter and experience the outdoors with her. Couldn't recommend it more. Kids Ride Shotgun, cloned MacRide. I'm kind of bummed with them about that. I liked Kids Ride Shotgun until they went and totally copied MacRide. MacRide is the original and they're a family driven business and I really respect that. Now we're gonna run over to my house so that you can see the riding clothes that I've picked out of years and years and years of trying different things. All right, we're inside now. Let's talk about some of my favorite riding clothes. Like I said, over 27 years of doing this, these are the things that really stand out. This is the Club Ride Johnson. The Johnson is what they market a one hour liner. Hey, look, that looks just like your saddle. I really like it because the padding's only where the saddle is and it's not absorbing excess sweat or odor or moisture like some of the really thick pads. I could go all day in this no problem. It's very comfortable. Uh, they last a very long time. I don't like anything with more padding than this. It just feels like you're wearing a diaper. Now, lately, I've been going chamois on a lot of rides. On bikepacking, I'll switch between the two. And these are Saks underwear. It's a compression short, kind of a boxer brief, and inside it's got this little pouch, which is awesome. It's for your anatomy. So, banana fits right in there, and the avocado right next to it. And so then when you're riding, nothing is bouncing around, it's all contained, and it's very, very comfortable. You don't have padding, and so they stay a lot cooler, they don't get so sweaty, um, when you're bike packing, I really like it. I bring two pair of these and I just rotate between the two. Now, if I'm bike packing more than two days, I'll bring a set of those club ride chamois because I, I don't have tough enough sit bones to ride these like eight hours days, like four days in a row. It kind of is nice to have that padding from the club ride Johnson chamois just to give me a little break from these. You don't need special underwear for biking. You can get these sacks. These are used for a lot of sports, a lot of different things. These are really catching on in the cycling world. I've tried the Merino ones um, and I like them, but they do get a little bit sweatier than just their regular ones. So I just get their classic, whatever uh, their best-selling underwear is, and that's what I wear under my shorts.
Now that we've talked liners, let's talk shorts. These are my favorites. Shorts are so easy to get wrong and so many companies mess up on their shorts. These are jorts and they're super stretchy and I really like these. These are by hand up. I've got a discount code for these in the description below. I love these shorts. They are the most comfortable riding pants I've ever ridden. And they have a fun vibe to them that doesn't say, hey, I'm a roadie or hey, I'm a racer. Look at me. It's like, hey, I'm a guy out to have some fun on my bike. And I like more casual styles. Now, if you want something that's a little bit more mountain bikey, this is the AT short. Now, Hand Up makes two different shorts, the AT and the AT Plus. This is actually the AT Plus, also a little bit stretchy, not as stretchy as the jorts, but more traditional looking. Simple, they've got what you need and nothing that you don't. The AT Plus is more durable and pills less than the regular AT short. So the AT Plus is a little bit more expensive, a little bit more sturdy. I love them both, I have them both. And I do find the AT Plus, if, if you like this short and the way it fits, I think it's worth the extra money. Now, Hand Up also makes pants that are the pant version of that. The AT Pant and the AT Plus Pant. I love these, they're also stretchy. They are quite durable. I've used a lot of other pants from Zoic, from Club Ride, oh, from Specialized, from Fox, so many different companies. And by far, these hand ups have been my favorite. These are not super heavy. I live in the desert. Uh, they're not super light either. They're just the perfect pant for me when it's chilly outside and I don't want to be sweating, but I don't want to wear shorts either. This is the hand up AT plus pant very simple pant that isn't just a good looking pant you can tell it's meant for riding when you ride it so that's it for pants those are pretty much the pants my go-to that i'm always wearing on every ride unless i'm trying something else out here is a jersey from patagonia patagonia is starting to get into the mountain bike world and this is the patagonia men's merino cycling jersey Basically, it's a merino t-shirt and merino wool is awesome. It keeps you warm even when it gets wet. It wicks odor and this is my go-to on bike packing trips or anytime I'm layering and wearing a flannel or something warmer on top. This is my base layer. It's super comfortable. It sits soft on the skin. And like all things Patagonia, it runs large. So this is a size large that fits more like an extra large. So I usually size down with Patagonia. I like the ethos of Patagonia. I like how they recycle and upcycle and refurbish and fix their clothing when it breaks. Um, but that doesn't matter if it's uncomfortable to wear and this is super comfortable to wear. Actually, I like wearing this shirt every day. If I had 10 of these, it'd probably be my number one t-shirt and I wouldn't wear anything else. Super comfy, odor resistant, keeps you warm, fantastic base layer when wearing under other things. And it can just be a great jersey that doesn't say, hey, I'm on a cycling team. So while I've only got one or two pants that I wear, there are a lot of upper layers that I change out. I'm no longer affiliated with Club Ride, but they still make my all-time favorite flannels. These flannels are super comfortable. Uh, they're super warm and they're a great way to dress up or dress down. So I'll often wear that Patagonia under this. These have a mesh underarm for more vent. Some of the flannels have a full underarm panel. Some have a half like this and some have none. I like the snaps. I can actually put it on while riding. It's very comfortable, great sizing. Pay attention to their sizing. Some of them are sport fit, like active fit. That means they fit tighter. In those, I'm a large. Some of them are comfort fit. In those, I'm a medium. So I'm kind of in between the two. <clears throat> but I love these. I can, if I'm getting too hot, I'll just wear it open and just wear it on my arms, get some good breeze in there. And if I'm really too hot, I'll pack it up and shove it in my hip pack and strap it on. These are what I wear most of the time in the winter. These just with a base layer. I've got five or six different club ride flannels and I think they're a great way to layer and still look casual and not look like you're wearing a speed suit out on your ride. When it's super hot, I just wear one layer up top. This is the club ride men's motive shirt. It's like this, almost this mesh like it's this mesh, super breathable material. Here in the desert, it's my favorite. It just, the, the air just blows right through it. It feels like you're wearing nothing. So super cool on the skin. For those hot days, this is my all time favorite jersey. And it's got the snap buttons as well. They're not cheap, 
but once you've ridden one of these and worn them, you will buy a couple more. Everyone I know that gets one gets a couple more. So like I said, no longer affiliated with Club Ride, but I recognize it's wonderful material and a wonderful jersey, and I highly recommend it. For when you want something less sporty and more fun, I love these Party Shirt International shirts. They help me remember that I'm out there to have fun. They give you a little bit of color. They give you a little bit of excitement to your outfit. They have awesome Hawaiian prints, really fun retro stuff. I got a link to them in the description below as well. And then this is what I'm most famous for wearing. Most people see me wearing this on the trail. This is the Patagonia Men's Capoline Hoodie. I have a whole video dedicated just to this. It's a sun hoodie. It's super thin. It's thinner than most t-shirt material. So it's not like I'm out there just sweating to death, but it's better to me than wearing sunblock. Sunblock just gets dusty and grimy and I feel gross, especially multi-days bike packing. This is my go-to shirt. It protects me from the sun because I don't want skin cancer. It picks up odor bad. It stinks. I have to wash it in a special thing after a ride, but nothing is as comfortable as this without overheating. I'm always looking for a better sun hoodie, and I think there's some things Patagonia could do. I wish I could work with them on developing one, but so far, this is the best thing I've had for sun protection and comfort when riding, and I'll wear this in 110 degree days because it keeps the sun off of me. When I get to the trailhead, I use this Pedal Industries changing poncho. This thing is awesome. It's like a giant muumuu or a giant dress, and you can it's so big you can change your clothes underneath it. So you just put it on over your head. It's got these nice slits. You can slip into all your clothes in a parking lot without flashing anybody. Nobody sees you. I use this thing all the time. I designed this one with Pedal Industries. Anyone can buy it. I got a link in the description below. But yeah, if you ever find yourself changing in parking lots, this is a great way to do it without having to huddle in the front seat of your car. For gloves, I'm a huge hand up fan. There are some great gloves out there, but there are also some pretty lousy gloves. I need a big thumb wipe for when my nose runs. You wipe it on there. I know it sounds gross, but I found hand up gloves to be the most durable and the most comfortable and give me the most grip. Um, these ones are the light summer ones, so they're kind of meshy, but every hand up glove I've ridden, I've absolutely loved. That's why I partner with them. I think they make the best gloves on the market right now. And they got fun messages on them. That's a nice little bonus. And fun colors. There's guaranteed to be something in there that resonates with your personality. Earlier this year, this company, Wildly Good, sent me some of their merino socks. Like I said, I'm a fan of merino wool. And I like a little bit thicker socks. I don't get blisters or um, moist feet as much with merino socks. These ones are cool. They're, they're no longer making these, but these have reflective material on them. So when you're riding at night and cars, shine, cars lights shine on them, they can see you. Regardless, I love these socks, and I'll put a link to them. They've got some other great wool socks in there, but I thought this was really cool to have the added safety factor of the reflective material in there. At the Sedona Mountain Bike Festival, the guys at 510 showed me these shoes, and I thought they were the ugliest shoes I'd ever seen, and they still might be, but these have become my favorite flat pedal shoes. These are the 510 Freerider Pro. I don't get rocks in them. I don't get dirt in them because of this high cuff. They've got padded ankles. They're Velcro, which I actually like more than Boa. And they have that legendary stealth rubber. These shoes are my favorite flats. These are my favorite clipless shoes. These are the 510 Kestrel Boa Pro. This is my second pair. I really like them and I put a lot of miles on these. They've got a carbon shank in them, which I was worried would make them super uncomfortable, but they're not to me. On all my clipless shoes, I modify these cleat slots and I ream them out with a Dremel tool, another centimeter, so I can get the cleat even farther back. If you'll notice, every enduro rider runs their cleats all the way back, so I'm wondering why aren't more companies moving their cleats back? A lot of XC and roadies ride with it up here on the ball of the foot for power transfer. I ride with it in the back for control. Same thing with my flat pedals. It's usually in the middle of my shoe so that because of how I dip my foot or dip my toes, to get the pedal to do what I want it to do. So that's pretty interesting to do. The stealth rubber is all but worn down down here, but it offers good grip even when I have to hike a bike. It's got cat tongue on the heel so that it slides in but doesn't slide up. Never had a blister with these. When they get soggy, they stay soggy, but they're fantastic shoes and I'll be buying another pair. 
For eyewear, I'm completely spoiled. I use the best of the best Julbo eyewear. These are the Furies, and this black pair is the Rush. These have adaptive lenses. They're 100% clear, but they will get tinted when they're in sunlight. The Furies uh, work with more helmets. They've got this nice little rubber strap here. The Rush has longer earpieces, but they're bendable. There's, rub there's metal in there, so you can bend them to fit. I like the face protection of these, and I like the look of these. I've been running these for years, and I remember I was at Sea Otter, and I got a chance to either support Julbo or Oakley, and after wearing both, I picked the Julbo, and I haven't regretted it since. This eyewear is absolutely fantastic, and it's all because of the lenses. These are taking their toll, the color's wearing off, and I'm still rocking them. I've tried over 30 different hip packs and I've narrowed it down to my three favorites. First up is my Alpine Threadworks. This is custom made by a guide up in Canada. He does amazing work. I've put these through the ringer. One of these got stolen and I missed it so much I had to make me another one. It's got a one liter platypus in it that just sticks out the side here. And I use that to refill my other water bottles. If I don't need the water, I take the platypus out. If I do, I put it in there. I find that's far better than running hoses and getting that tangled up in my bike and my bars and all that stuff. I'd rather just take my pack off and either drink from the platypus or fill up my other water bottles with it. Next up is my favorite minimalist hip pack. It's made by Hyperlite Mountain Gear. They make my favorite shelters, my favorite backpacking bags. They use this Dyneema material, which is very similar to the threads used on bird spokes. It's super light, it's 100% waterproof, and it's quite durable as long as you don't abrade it very much. But it's very simple. It's a few pockets with a little bit of padding. So if you don't need to carry water, this is my go-to. This thing packs so small and is so comfortable, you can wear it under your shirt and you forget you're even wearing it. Finally, I've got this Lab Austere Hip Pack. I've got a link and discount code in the description below. It fits two full-size water bottles in here, so I can carry almost two liters in here. So when I combine that with the bottle on my frame, I can get away with carrying quite a bit of water. I wish there was a way to strap my pump on here, but I haven't found a good way. But it's got lots of zippered pockets. I love these pockets on the hip support as well. These are fantastic. They're really well built, and I use them all the time, especially in the summer when I need a little bit extra water. Mountain biking is my life, and over 27 years, you accumulate all the good gear. So I've got a lot of stuff. Um, this is a new backpack I've recently received, also by Lab Austere, that I really like as well. It's a pretty good size pack where you can fit a lunch in it. Like whole enchilada, this would be a great size pack. I can fit a lot of things in there. I can fit food, I can fit tools, I can fit a jacket in there without it being super bulky and cumbersome. It's got straps on the bottom, which I love for cinching down knee pads or a jacket. One thing I don't totally love is this helmet pouch. I'm never taking my helmet off when I'm riding. I'm never like climbing up a road with my helmet in there, but I know some people do. I also don't love straps that cross a zipper. I know it strengthens the zipper, but now when I want to get into the zipper, I have to un unstrap it and then finish the zipper. Just a small thing, but um, it's got integrated back protection, integrated room for a bladder as well. Lots of good storage pockets on the inside. Really great value for the price and high quality. I've got a discount code to this in the description below too. This is the same one that Yoan Borelli uses. It's also got that really nice center strap design that keeps the harness away from your armpits and you forget you're wearing it. Really great bag by Lab Austere. This is their first backpack and they've done a great job with it. Next, we have another kind of funky backpack by Alpine Threadworks. It does have accommodations for a bladder. It looks more like an 80s or 90s ski touring bag, and he makes ski touring bags, but it's just the right size. A little bit smaller than some, which prevents you from overpacking it. It's got a big main compartment, some pockets in there. It's got a really funky closure system here. I kind of dig it. It's a little bit different. But um, more pack, more you know, pockets and stuff in here. But when you close it up, you zip it, and you got a snap here and a snap here. Kind of funky, but a great mid-sized pack that this will last 40 years. These things are just bomber and built so well. 
Here's my last backpack. This is my big one when I need to carry a lot of stuff. This is the Usui Hiker Pro 24. This thing is big, it's a big roll top. It reminds me of my backpacking bag. It's just one big tube with some stretchy pockets on the side. I actually think it'd make a great uh, backpacker as well. Lots of pockets in good places. I like this storage down here to keep the weight low. It's a roll top waterproof closure with one buckle here. And then these connect to elastics here. It really feels more like a modern backpacking backpack than a cycling backpack. It's got this anti-monkey back system with mesh straps with padding in them. Just a really secure way to hold the load. It's got hip pockets as well. This is the bag I can totally load up with 30, 40 pounds and it stays on my back. Long trips where I'm just carrying tons and tons of stuff. This is my go-to. I've got a link to this in the description below and they've got two or three different sizes as well, but I'm really impressed with the quality of this. This is my race day bag by Pedal Industry. It's got these one, two, three, four pockets for different things. They're labeled. I designed this with them, jerseys and shorts, jackets and knee pads, goggles, glasses, socks. If you love hardtails and you want to keep your stuff organized, this is a great way to do it. Get the hardtail party edition. If you don't love hardtails or don't want this branding, there are other designs as well. You've got storage for your helmet here and you've got storage for your shoes here. Basically, this acts as a checklist. So when you're going on a trip, you make sure you've got everything. And when you're on the trip, you know exactly where everything is to access it. I love this thing. It helps me stay organized on road trips for my bike. For lights, I use the outbound lighting system. They're my favorite ones. I'm not going to go into much detail because I'm going to do a full dedicated review on this. This is the Trail Evo, hands down the best bar light. And this is the Hangover, not the best helmet light, but a good one, and they pair really well together. I have other helmet lights I like slightly more. I'd like a little more light output, a little more throw, but as a pair, they work extremely well. This is self-contained, there's no extra battery pack. Super, super rugged, super well built. That's all I'm gonna say about that. If you night ride, that's the one I recommend. This one's an app. This is Ride with GPS. This is crucial for me for planning my bike packing routes. I really like the interface and it's a great way to get my info onto my Wahoo, which is my favorite cycling computer. Camping and water are a big part of my mountain bike journey. This is Stanley's water jug. I absolutely love this thing. I've had Gatorade jugs, which leaked and did not last very long. I've had military scepter cans. I've had collapsible ones, I've had bladders, I've had dromedaries. This is my favorite. It's got four simple clips and they're plastic. You got a little vent release valve and the insulation on this is insane. And then you just push right there to fill up your water bottles. This is a must on every road trip. I have zero complaints about it. It's solved a lot of the problems I've had with other water bottles. This is the PNW Coast Dropper. I was skeptical at first when I heard about this. It's a suspension dropper. So it has 40 mil of suspension on top of acting as a dropper. And I requested one of these for review after a few of you asked. I actually really love this thing in certain conditions. For riders who sit down a lot of the time or want a little bit of extra cushion or kind of want to bridge that gap between a full suspension and hardtail, at least while sitting down, I think this is a great option. It would never be my all time like technical dropper. And I talk about this more in some of my videos, but I think it's a really cool invention and I'm glad it exists. And for bike packing or long days in the saddle, it provides just enough cushion that it actually uh, encourages you to stay seated more and not stand up so much. So that could be a con, but uh, it, it does make for a very comfortable seated ride. Here's one last piece of Epic gear. This is from official tool roll. This is a lot like the race day bag. One, two, three, four, five pockets. Put your tools in. I've got all my car stuff in here. I keep this in my truck, but I want to get a couple more for bike tools. You can keep them all separate, roll them all up, snap it up, and away you go. Super high quality. They've got three different colors, tan, gray, and like an army green. I'm a big fan of tool rolls. I know those cool toolboxes that all the pro mechanics have for their toolbox wars are all the rage, but I think this is actually more practical for most people. And for road trips, I plan on getting a couple more and putting all my bike tools in there so I've got a shop on the road.
Now it's the moment you've all been waiting for, hardtail of the year, what will it be? There are a lot of great options. I can't choose the Binary Maniac because I'm too involved in that. That's the hardtail that I designed. I love that thing, I'm so thrilled. And it's just arriving at people's houses right now, so people are finally getting to build them and finally getting able to ride them as well. I'm excited to hear their comments. So it felt wrong to nominate my own bike, so that's not even in the running right now, but I do love the Maniac, no complaints with that bike. Other bikes that almost made the cut, and these are just bikes I've focused on in the last year. The Marin T Marin 2, that bike seriously impressed me. Um, unfortunately, there's been reports of some of the seat stays cracking. Marin has updated the design for 2023. Supposedly it's stronger. I haven't ever cracked one. I haven't ridden the new one yet either, but that bike was really special. The price point was spot on. The Marin T Marin 1 had the same frame, just lower end components. Um, I think they were a little too low end on that bike though, but the T Marin 2 for what it came with for the price was outstanding. And that is the softest riding aluminum frame I've ever ridden. It's too bad to hop on the forums and see the guys that have broken them because most people are saying, dang it, this was the hardtail for me. I absolutely love this thing. I love the Geo, I love the way it rides, I love the weight. It feels great, it's not overly stiff. And now it's broken and what can I replace it with? Well. There aren't a whole lot of other options. One of them is the bike of the year, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. But huge props to Marin for that bike. The Geo's really good. There's some wonky things like the cable routing and the flat mount disc brake. I don't care. I like that bike so much, I bought it off of Marin, and I've got some future projects for it. So big fan of the Team Marin 2. Bummer about that cracked seat stay. Because of that, I can't recommend it as bike of the year, but it's in the running and it's special. And there are thousands of people who have those who haven't cracked the seat stay. So take that into consideration. Another favorite bike this year was a custom bike and it should be favorite because it was custom. And that's the Manzanita custom frame that Nick from Manzanita Cycles made for me. That thing rode so well and we ended up raffling it off and donating to proceeds. That bike is the one that got away. I wish I still had that thing. That thing rode so well. It was very light. Uh, the angles were just what I wanted. I picked my dream Geo and he built it to me. Handcrafted, just beautiful attention to detail. It had that killer Technar paint job on it. I loved that bike. It was shreddy, but light and not overly aggressive. It was everything a hardtail should be. Love that Manzanita Cycles. If you're looking for a custom frame, that is the way to go to me. There's a lot of other great custom frames I've reviewed, but that one really stood out as special. Another bike in the running was the Trek Roscoe. The new 22 Trek Roscoe really impressed me. It's a great little bike. So what makes the Roscoe stand out is how well-rounded it is. It's available at so many shops. People are able to throw a leg over it. It fits 29 by 26 tires. It's got a nice ride feel. The Geo is pretty middle of the road. It's rowdy enough that you could take it on a double black diamond, but it's not so slack that it's still fun in your backyard trails. I think Trek did a really good job at making such a versatile bike. The tires are slow and draggy, so if you've got one and it feels slow, put some faster rolling tires on there that are lighter. That'll make a big difference. I like their pricing. I like their build structures. I just think it's a great accessible hardtail. The old Roscoe missed on so many fronts, but the new one is boost, um, through axle, just a lot of great stuff going on there. Is it perfect? No. Seat tubes are a little long, reach is a little short, and I don't feel like the bike excels anywhere. Like, it's not my favorite anything, but it's an A- minus in just about every category. Really great bike, that new Trek Roscoe. So out of all the great bikes I've ridden in 2022, which one's my all-time favorite? The hardtail of the year? It's none other than the Newhouse Metalworks Hummingbird. This is the most comfortable bike I've ridden, the most supple bike I've ridden. It just encapsulates everything a modern trail hardtail should be. I feel like the Geo fit it perfectly. Usually when I get on a bike, I'm like, oh, I want the reach a little longer, I want the stack a little taller, I want heading a little slacker. On this bike, I just rode it and completely forgot about it. There's not a single thing I would change on this bike. I think this is the hardtail most people need but don't know they need it because most people haven't ridden a good hardtail like this before. So yeah, this is very special. I'm gonna set this frame down before I drop it. What's wonderful about it is it makes green trails and blue trails and even some black diamond trails fun again. It's lightweight, it's everything a hardtail should be. Like, it seems simple to get a hardtail right, but so many companies get them wrong. But Nick at Newhouse gets it right. 
external cable routing, water bottle cages on the inside, nice light steel frame, super supple frame. I haven't ridden a steel frame or even tie frame or even carbon. I've never ridden a frame more supple than Nick's Hummingbird. And that's one thing. It's, it's not just supple though. Like it's the complete package. The Geo just works perfectly. Most people have too much overlap when they get multiple bikes. So most people have a 140, 150, 160 full suspension bike. And then when they get a hardtail, they're like, I'm hardcore, I ride hard things, I want a rowdy hardtail. And then they get a 63 degree head angle shredder that has a lot of overlap with their other bike. Now it's different because it's a hardtail, but I don't know, sometimes you still struggle, which bike do I take? I propose you have a separation between one bike and the other. And I think the Hummingbird is the modern trail bike hardtail that we all want but don't know we want yet. I'm convinced if they had those at a demo and people were riding those, they'd sell more of those than most full suspensions. And it's made in the US. It's made by one man who's super passionate. He partners with this awesome guy, Daniel, who's doing some amazing 3D printing to build the yokes and the stays. Really cool tech, but who cares about the tech if it doesn't ride good? And the ride is just magical on that thing. There's not a single thing I would change about that bike. And I'm super proud to give this 2022 Hardtail of the Year Award to Nick at Newhouse Metalworks. You're doing awesome things, my friend. It's awesome to see you chase your dream and take your knowledge and experience and riding skills to create a truly outstanding hardtail that stands head and shoulders above the rest of the stuff I'm riding. And that's hard to do. There are hundreds and hundreds of hardtails out there but you've done it, my friend. If you guys ever get a chance to ride a hummingbird, holy cow, take it. That is the new hardtail to beat in the trail category. Bravo, Nick. Well-deserved. Thank you for sending them in for review on the channel here. Thanks, you guys, for loving hardtails and getting nerdy with me on this channel, getting experimental. Don't forget to use the links in the description below to support this channel. Feel free to post any questions in the comments below. As always, if you guys are interested in picking my brain on bikes or builds or anything like that, head on over to Patreon. That supports this channel and it's how I'm able to do what I'm doing. I love hardtails. I love that you guys love hardtails. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.